All right, what's going on, guys? No, nah, nothing much. You always, you always you ask always, me that, but you always interrupt me when I'm, I'm not talking to you. Um, oh, who are you talking to? Some people. Talking to the listeners, of course. <laughs> How dare I? Step yeah, don't call in. them listeners. He didn't mean. <laughs> uh, Mermaider here with, of course, Hell Twenty Two, aka yep. the Jokester. <laughs> Yeah, we got some shit going on in the headquarters tonight. Yeah. Pickles is strutting around like he fucking owns the place. Pickles the drummer. He does. And uh, the fucking place is turning into a bake shop. We got, yeah, I was uh, wondering what that smell is. You know, we, got, we got the cookies. Bitches be baking the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good dessert after a podcast. <laughs> That's right. What better way to end a podcast than with some cookies? <laughs> and uh, we are selling these cookies online if you guys are interested. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We are selling the sampler online. Uh, yeah, the sampler. By cookies, I meant sampler. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, <laughs> so let's get into some of the reviews that we just did uh, this past week. Yeah. Hell 22, you did one of a band called M-A-I-M. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what it says. And I gotta tell you, you know, it's our first week back from vacation and... This was not a good way to start the first week back. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know really how to describe this other than saying it's it's Celtic folk metal. Okay. But in the style of the Dropkick Murphys. What it, the it's f- basically like Celtic folk punk. Uh, um, okay. Which would be fine if you're a fan of the Dropkick Murphys. But, you know, I was looking for some metal. And unfortunately, this just wasn't, uh, wasn't what I wanted it to be, really. Mm. Um, the problem... They're from Italy. That's the problem. They're from Italy, and do you they, know. Um, do they list themselves as metal? Yep, Celtic folk metal. Um, mm-hmm. But the name of the album is "The Frozen Paths." Frozen Pass, not Path, but Pass. Uh, I just don't. I just don't get it. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just me. Maybe I just you know didn't get what they were going for. But mm-hmm. you know, they got the the fiddle is the best part because you know there's a lot of great melodic fiddle leads and that's uh, cool and all. But so often it just descends into this weird punk with really unpolished vocals did you ever get around to listening to the the hell album a little bit i think i played a song or two that, yeah. that guy has an interesting voice where he's almost like screeching yeah screech talking almost yeah but it works for him right the guy in maim basically does the same thing and unfortunately it just doesn't yeah. really work yeah. um it's a short album which was probably thankful for me i just i just don't know I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just not a, really not what I was looking for to start my year. Yeah. So, um, you know, you can check it out. I guess they're on uh, they're on the MySpace and the the Facebook and Face, what have you. Face so, Bizzle. you know, check out some uh, some clips and see what you think. You know, and then, hey, maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I mean, I don't, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> but anyway, that's fine. Now, Mermaider, you had better luck to start the new year. Yes, I did. Um, you did a review for a band which we are going to call Achilles. Yep, the band is Achilles. Or Aquilus or Aquilus. <laughs> We're not sure. Aquilus. We'll just say Achilles. <laughs> Achilles. It's fine. Yep, they are from Australia. And oh, fuck, that's good already. Yeah, and um, they just came out with a new album and it's called, uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but it, I think it's pronounced Grisis. Sure, whatever. Grisis. Um, <laughs> not crisis, but no, crisis. Yeah, gr. <laughs> yep. But uh, they are atmospheric black metal, but they have a lot of like neoclassical tones. A lot. I mean, it's it really borderlines being classical altogether. Now you told me that, and I remember being kind of amazed because the idea of classical and black metal just don't seem to fit to me. Right. But until you <sighs> until you think to like, mm. oh, I mean, I even mentioned this in the in the review but I I say that if Beethoven was in a band right now this would be like his band right now Uh, because I mean he was like more he had more of a dark side to him when he wrote classical music Beethoven yeah yeah but you know I think but not dark like black metal dark but still you know minor notes and keys and whatnot well yeah but you know the one thing to say is that you know if Beethoven was in a band right now he wouldn't do very much good because he's been dead for like 180 years yeah yeah so that you know he wouldn't be very good in a band right now. <laughs> well, these guys basically include a lot of different um, orchestrated instruments and a lot of piano. A lot of different uh, types of piano riffs that are... It's really interesting. Uh, each song is unique, different in its own way. And each song averages to be like way over 10 minutes. Uh, there's a couple on there that are 15, 16 minutes long. It's a pretty long album. 
but it's it's definitely I I loved it. Uh, and for starting the new year, it was definitely a treat for me. So um, you know, if if you guys are into that, uh, you know, black metal with a little mix of uh, neo classical uh, music, then definitely check this band out. I think that description alone warrants you know listening to a track or two at least. Oh yeah, definitely. They're not very active on their Facebook, but you know maybe if they start seeing some people checking it out, maybe they will be. Yeah. But uh, now hmm. you did another review this week. I did. One of our uh, new favorite bands, mm. Alcest. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of, I mean, it's not really convenient because this was part of the reason, but uh, they are our band of the month yep. for the uh, for January. But uh, they're back with a new album, which the name of it I will butcher, Le Voyage de la um, <laughs> which translates to Journeys of the Soul. Uh-huh. And uh, I think the key to this album, which is fantastic, by the way, is that they went in a this a similar direction but with a different kind of twist on it a lot more melody and as i was telling you before the black metal style that you know we like so much on ikai de lum mm. uh they're doing it still but all of his black metal vocals are done without effects on it there's no reverb there's no delay it's not just clouded in effects it's just straight up him just doing black metal vocals. Does he at all lean back to the older vocals? Nope, nope, not at all. So there's there's no like you know ridiculous delay. I thought that was my one of my least favorite parts of of Ikai de Lune was that you know all of his black metal vocals just had that echo effect on A little it. Just, over overdone, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one he gets rid of that. Um, the lead single Ultra Temps, which translates to Other Times, is perfect. I mean, it's absolutely it's completely melodic, but a lot just a lot of melody on here, but mm. definitely. Exactly what you would expect <laughs> going from, you know, their their chain of albums. This is like the best of each album kind of in one. Right. I would call it a greatest hits, but, you know, it's obviously all new songs, so it's not a greatest hits. But <laughs> uh, it's eight songs this time as opposed to six from the last one. Mm-hmm. But uh, definitely, I think you know, anyone who's even remotely a fan of this band, I think, will uh, will like this. I think that they've they're leaning away a little bit from that. You know, before we were kind of calling them atmospheric post black metal. Right. I would just call them atmospheric melodic metal now. Oh yeah. Because I, you know, the the black metal moments are a little bit fewer and far between, mm-hmm. which I think makes them more powerful uh, in a way. You know, they're not overused. Right. Um, but yeah, I gotta say maybe this is my album of the year already. Damn. Wouldn't it be some shit six days into the year and <laughs> we and already come across? Well, yeah. hey, that was my. That happened with me. It was my half, yeah. half year uh, list. Yep. Stradivarius is right up there in the first yeah. week that it came out. Yep. So, I mean, they, this is a definitely it's a great could, way to start the year. Could be. And I remember you showed me the album cover. It looks good. Yep. Looks oh, really yeah. Good. Their artwork is always good. I'm, I'm a big fan of the artwork. They actually have a video for the first single, and it's mainly just people walking through the woods and by a stream and everything. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of simple, but it's. I think it, it makes the music that much more interesting. Because the music really is a combination of this this weird like beauty and sadness at the same time. Yeah, and, you know I think that's what makes Alcest such a, a great band to listen to. Oh, I think I saw that video. Now that I think about you it, probably you probably did. They posted it me. on their Facebook. I, yeah. I probably sent you the link to yeah. it. But um, yeah, so Alcest, Le Voyage de la M. <laughs> yeah. uh, Journeys of the Soul to the Uncultured Like Us. <laughs> Definitely check it out. Um, now, Mermaid, you were uh, kicking around an idea earlier. We didn't know what the fuck to talk about, you know, talking about the the current uh, Vegas odds on basketball games, uh-huh. uh, the impending NFL playoffs, etc. That's not really topics for for the Sorrow Eternal no. podcast. We uh, should have two separate. You know. Yeah, we really should. Uh, we can, and we could also have one talking about the baking of cookies, but that's that's a separate thing altogether. So anyway, what were you what were you thinking about earlier? Cookies. I mean, what hot, hot dogs? <laughs> Um, well, I, I wanted to just uh, make note of, I, I know we, we t- had a podcast a while ago where we talked about um, side projects, uh-huh. and I kind of want to bring it up again, but get a little more in depth with some of the bands that we have already mentioned before and, and maybe some new ones that we haven't yet mentioned. Um, but just the idea that some of these guys are... Not only doing side projects, but they are making, uh, going in a different. They're they are going in a different direction of genre when they do these side projects. For example, 
I guess we can start off with uh, the side project, Bloodbath. Bloodbath. Now, that's that's a big one. Now, I want to mention before we get into that that uh, we did discuss this before, the idea of side projects, which was actually the 19th episode okay. of our podcast, which was titled A Side of Metal and Gravy. <laughs> um, so there's that. But anyway, Bloodbath, uh, as some of you know, features in its ranks uh, Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth, yep. as well as uh, Jonas from Catatonia. And it is their, like, brutal death metal side project. Like, traditional, real death metal. Right. And it's so different from what we've come to expect, especially from Catatonia. Yeah. Oh, now, yeah. Opeth kind of delves into that whole death metal thing, but right. this is, like, absolute blood and guts death metal. Mm-hmm. Which is good because you know it's not like it's not like Michael Ackerfeld has Opeth and Opeth Part Two. Right. Yeah. He has Opeth know. and Bloodbath. Yeah. And Jonas has Catatonia, which is obviously a melodic. I don't know what else I would call them. Just a melodic metal band, and then Bloodbath. Yeah. Um, but that's you know it's a good thing. It kind of keeps it fresh and and what have you. Well, that's that's the thing we were talking about before too. Was that you know some of these bands it's uh, it's kind of pointless to have a side project if you're just going to sound exactly like yourself. Exactly, you which know. then the one that kept coming up was the whole Iced Earth, Sons of Liberty thing. Right. You know, Sons of Liberty is basically Iced Earth with political vocals. Right. Which, I mean, you know, either you like it or you don't, it's fine, but, mm. you know. It's, uh, yeah, at that point you might as well just have all of Iced Earth just playing all the instruments and everything. Cause exactly. It, you know, really did sound very similar. 